Hey guys, um, I'm going to start doing a little tutorial series um, for creating your own custom like house for Skyrim in the Creation Kit. And before I start, I'd just like to say check out the Creation Kit website first and the level editing section and just, you know, read over that to get to basics with the some of the techniques used and short keys and stuff like that because I'm not I'm, I'm not an expert myself. I'm still learning. So I might miss out a couple of things. And the idea of this is that we're going to create a small kind of like little farmhouse where you don't have to pay, you can put it down anywhere you want and you'll be able to save your stuff there, you know, stay there. It's basically for like the star game, basically. You don't have to rely on mods, other people's mods to get a house. You can do it yourself because it's relatively simple. So the first thing you're going to do is open up the creation kit and load skyrim.esm and it might take a while now this series is going to be sh pretty short because there's not really much to put in like a small house and I'm going to try and deviate from the Nordic ruins and caves because everyone seems to be doing that so once this loads up we've got the render window here this is where you're going to see your 3D objects the object window is how you're going to find all the things you need like walls and clutter stuff like that with a filter so if you search kettle you're gonna find everything that's called kettle yeah kettle um, and down here in the cell view this is like gonna be what you're working on the cells so Pelagia farm when you load that it's gonna be the farm cell for that go to file and save and this is what we're going to call our plugin and I'm just going to call it custom house there's no save as button, there's only a save button so be careful with that, you can't save different versions and now we're going to go into the cell view down here and find the AAA markers cell, duplicate that by right clicking duplicate cell and now you're going to have a copy just below it click on the copy and press F2 and rename it to what you want to call your house so I'm just going to call it player house for now you can call it whatever you want now double click on player house to load the cell in the render view in here you're going to see all the objects that have already currently placed and you're going to highlight all of them and delete them if they don't disappear you might have to load a different cell and then reload your cell again to d for them to delete alright so now you have an empty cell alright so now we're gonna start setting up the basic layout of our little hut and what you're gonna do to find the hut is in this little drop down list thing here let me just reset it. you're gonna go to world objects and expand that static once this loads yeah static and then architecture and go to the farmhouse set expand that and interior and this is going to be all the interior farm sets and now any searches, filters you apply are only going to apply to the interiors of the farm set and now we're going to need four objects to set up our house you can use more if you know what you're doing but just for the sake of tutorial, this tutorial, we're going to use just four as for the naming scheme you'll probably have to check out the wiki because I'm not too good with the naming scheme um, but generally the type of building that it's for, for example farm it's going to be for a farm, NOR stands for Nordic and we've got a wall with an entrance and it's like variation 1, variation 2, 3, 4 and 5 um, but yeah check the creation kit website for more on this now the four pieces we're going to need to build our house are going to be farm internal 2 and oh what sorry farm int 2 
E end 01. Now it's going to appear in here. Hold shift and just move your mouse. It's going to rotate around the object that is centered to. If you hold the middle mouse button down on its own, you can drag the camera about. If you hold, let me just turn these on. If you hold the right mouse button, it's going to rotate the object. And then left clicking is going to drag the object about. To go for a top down view, press T. And then to refocus, say if you get lost and you want to refocus on an object, it's Shift and F, and it will center the object again. And I think that's generally about it. Um, Q is allows you for snap to grid movement, so this is turned off at the moment. I can place it anywhere I want. With Q, it will snap to a grid, and Control Q allows for like a smoother rotation of the object. Whereas if you have it pressed on Control Q on it will snap to a 45 degree angle. Um, with sets like this, which are like interiors and stuff, you want to snap it to grid and snap it to angle because then everything matches up nicely. But organic sets like terrain and stuff like that, cave and boulders sets, you want to... it looks better if you turn them off. But yeah, um, now we're going to search for farm internal INT2 doorway and I'm going to go for doorway 04 if you drag it onto the object that's already there it will appear on the same light level as it whereas if I were, let me delete that, if I was to drag it just into space then it would it wouldn't match up and you'd have to you know rearrange it it's just it's a little time saving technique and now we want Farm int to hearth, hearth 02, and the last piece for this house, farm int to end, and I'm going to go for 02, so it's the opposite to this one. Now, if you have snap to grid on, everything should snap nicely together. And there you go, you've got a top layer and a basement layer with an entrance over here and a fireplace one thing I forgot to do is to zero it out actually so if you click on an object and edit it you can see here its position in the world and it just makes everything easier if you drop it onto zero I probably should have told you this before but I guess it's nice to learn so zero everything out will make your life a little bit easier. So click on the object, edit, zero, zero, zero. And now you'll notice that you're blank and it's pretty hard to try and find where everything's been placed. So cell view and then the objects will be listed here. Click on anything, double click and it will focus on that object again. So if you get lost, you can use the cell view to help navigate back to an object. Let me just... So there we go. That's our object, our little house set up. And there we go. If I clear this, we can add some rooms. Some little separations downstairs or upstairs, you know, just to have a couple more rooms. Makes it a bit different. And I need to find dividers. So far, let me just check. Yep. So get to farm B divider 01. Drag that in. And yeah, divider 02. Put them in your basement or wherever you want. And then you can create small little sections to your house. And I think snap into grid is best here. And now if you look, we've got kind of a small little section of our house that we can add a door to and it's a separate room. I'm going to make another one. Control D to duplicate something. 
hold the right mouse button and drag to, you know, rotate. Control D on the doorway. And then we've got two small little rooms. You'll notice here that you've got a little gap, which just, it looks odd. So we're going to drop something in there to fill it up. Um, let's try farm B column 01. Yeah, and then you can just drop that in the gap to make it look a little nicer. And that is the basic layout completed. Alright, so now we've got our basic layout done. Um, if you want to test it, just to see if there's anything wrong with it, then put the selection back to all in the object window. In the filter, you're going to search for COC marker, I believe, and place one of them. So, COC marker, yeah, COC marker heading, and drop this anywhere into your environment and this is basically going to be a like a tester spawn point and now I'm going to open up Skyrim and show you how to test your little hut so I'm going to save this close this down now before you do anything go to data files and you can check what's um, loaded at the moment so let me do select like that and now you can see customhouse.esp you want that to be ticked so that once you load Skyrim, you can, it's going to be available to play. Okay, so once Skyrim's loaded up, you're going to press the tilde key, which is, for me anyway, on the UK layout, underneath the escape key, to open up the console, and then type COC, and then the name of your cell. Um, don't type the name of your plugin, it's the name of the cell. So in my case, I called it Player House, I believe. And you ignore any spaces. So COC and then the name of your cell and then it should automatically load. And now you can, if you've done it correctly, you'll be loaded into your house and just get a look for the layout, check if there's any gaps into the void or any spider web in. Um, yeah, that's about it. You can see that downstairs is got, oh, yeah, yeah. Might need to fix that up. Um, I'll decide later. But yeah, so we've got the basic layout done for this tutorial. In the next one, I think I'll be doing placing down objects like cooking pots, chests, and beds, stuff like that, furniture in general. Um, I might do a bit of FX if I have time, but I'll see. So yeah, um, I look forward to seeing you on my next video, and I'd appreciate comments since this is my first tutorial. Um, thanks.